I'm praying that I'm going to cut my message short. Because it's very necessary. And by the grace of God, we may continue next week. But for a few minutes, we'll be talking on the topic, building your life on the right foundation. Amen. Building your life on the right foundation. Amen. I don't know what Paul is saying. Where is the back? But it's okay. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24 and 27. And I will ask Pastor Ola to read for us. Media, can you help if you have it? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to the 27. Pastor Ola. Therefore, whosoever heareth this saying of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the reading. Uh, I want to welcome each and not every one of you, our viewer, to the Breakthrough International Ministry in Charlotte. As you will be joining us or with us this morning in worship, it is our prayer that you take your notebook, your Bible, take your pen, and be able to join down some of the references we'll be giving a scripture's teaching that after this service, we encourage you to also do your own study. Amen. Are you with me this morning? It is my prayer to those of you on my word this morning that the Lord will open your understanding so we can go through this teaching that at least you can learn something from there and apply it into your own life. Amen. Uh, building your life on the right foundation. Amen. If we talk about right foundation, then that means there must be a wrong one. Am I right? Oh, you got to preach with me this morning. Hallelujah. Building your life. Tell to somebody, say, are you on the right foundation? Are you built on the right foundation? Amen. In this parable, Jesus outlined the important areas of this, this that we're going to be discussing today. That I want us to expand on. One. In verse 24 and 26. Jesus talked about two builders. Two prospectors builder. Amen. And he said there was two men. That desired to do what built. Amen. And he said these two people. There was a classification of these people or a characteristic of these people that distinguish them. It's not every bidders are good bidders. Amen. It's not every bidders that make a better decision. But from this story, the Bible said Jesus said two men were building. One, he said one were wise and the other ones were what? Talk to me, church. They all learn one prospective builder, one was wise, and one was what? Foolish. Number two, he gave us two counts of foundation that his peoples were building on. Amen? And what are the foundation? One building on what? The rock. And another building on? Talk to me. Take your note. I want you. To, I want you to take your note. Amen. This is important. 
we will not end it. Then number three, he mentioned in the parable the rain came, the floor came, and the storm came. Amen. So as a student of the world, I want you to just go with me as we go through this message. I want you to learn something. Be attentive. We're breaking it down. Building your life on the right foundation. One. If we're talking about building, that means somebody putting something together. Amen. Amen. We hear people say, I'm going to bear my life in this world. I'm going to bear this. But in my own personal experience, on the values of building on the right foundation is this. Sometime, some years ago, 22, I mean 2000, as a first home buyer, we got approved by the bank. We went, after we got approved, we started facing, a, we went through a major problem with the billers. You know, as a first-time home buyer, you are anger. You are, we went around the neighborhood, and they took us there, and they said, this is a spot. We're going to bear your house. 2000, inshallah. And they took us somewhere on Ramper Road, on Sugar Creek Ramper Road. We went all the way in the back, and it was a beautiful neighborhood. We fell in love with this neighborhood. And all our minds, well, we want to be a part of that neighborhood. Amen? And a week after, when mommy and I went home, after we had signed the agreement, signed a document that that was our spot where the building was going to be built, we got message back. They called us, you need to come. We went to the office of the builders, and they told us, said, nah, we cannot build anything on that particular spot. We got disappointed. Why? The builder said, it is not a good spot that we can build on. We try to convince these people. We try to talk to them, talk to them about what happened. There are other buildings here. But why? This building can be put on this spot. They said, listen, professionally, we cannot even know the problem and continue the, the construction work on that spot because you will have a shifting foundation on your building. Praise the Lord. We didn't understand what he was talking about. He said, because... We had done, we did our test on the sword. And what we found out, there is something called quicksand that is associated with that sword. And it's by sword. So if we put the house down there, or if we dig a foundation down there, you will always have cracks in your wall. Turn to somebody and say, cracks in your wall. When a building, when your house is not on the right foundation, you will always have what? Because the foundation will be what? Shaky. So, we got convinced. And they said, well, we can redirect you guys to another place. From Rapper Rose, they took us to the Navy Brook community. The high if some of you knew our first place in Navy Brook, that how we got to be where we were, amen? Praise the Lord. So what am I seeing here today? Due to some of the wrong decisions and the choices we make, when we look within our community and look at ourselves, there are shifting foundation on the middle of the homes. Because of that, we got cracks in our life. Amen? Amen. Tell to somebody, say, when your foundation is shaky, when your foundation is shifting, you will always have what cracks. Amen? Amen. 
Many in our community today are facing the, the, the foundations or crack the foundation because of that. We have crack in the church. We have cracks in the relationship. We have cracks in our family. We have cracks among Christian brother and sister because why? The bailing was on why? A shifting foundation. So my question here to you and myself this morning is this. What is the foundation that you need to face your life? Number two. What is the foundation you need in, the, in your family's life to, to be solid and stand to avoid the cracks? Praise the Lord. Am I speaking to somebody here? If the foundation is not solid, if the foundation is wrong, we will always do patches on our cracks. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody here? If the foundation is not strong, you know what happened. You will have cracks on the world. There are times sometimes in some of our homes, we see cracks on the world. That means something happening from beneath. The airs are shaking on the foundation that causing the cracks. Praise the Lord. Look in your family. Do you have cracks? Look in your life. Do you have cracks? Look in the church. Do we have cracks? Amen. Two. Prospective builder. Their characters, their approach towards the building. The way you build, the way you carry it out, the way you think about it, the way you approach it, it will make the difference. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody here? Because decision making are so important in whatever you do. These two men, they, were, they had so many things in common. They had dreams together. Their dream was to build. Amen. They had desire together. The desire was to build. But one thing that made them different, the decisions they made was in the wrong area. One made the right decision and one made the wrong decision. The one that made the decision, some of us want a quick first life. Praise the Lord. We can't go through this. One, Christ was talking about not about the physical house. He was talking about the spiritual house. Praise the Lord. Your physical house cannot be okay when your spiritual house is shaking. Praise the Lord. Amen. What am I talking about here, beloved? What they did, they had in common was this. They better listen to, 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 to the message. He said, those are hard, my word. That means that both of them listen. They heard the word of mine, the word of Christ. He said, because the way their life was built, it was not true. Some people don't take things serious. Live your life in any kind of way you want to live it. When you're engaged, you do something, you do it in any kind of way. Praise the Lord. Am I speaking to somebody here? But this is it. To build a life on a foundation, the decision will determine the end result. What am I saying? The decision you make now, who you want to be tomorrow. The decision we make now who our family should be tomorrow. The decision we make now about what the church should be to, tomorrow. Amen. It, has, it will show the end result of how we end. Praise the Lord. Am I speaking to somebody here? The two better started in different, they started the same way, but in different manner. Am I speaking to somebody here? The same desire, the same dream, but the same lesson into the same world. But what happened? Totally, complete, different application. 
Have you been somewhere where you and somebody go for the same reason, the same purpose, but you do different things? Amen? The two builders, the Bible said they took total, totally different approach to life. Jesus said one was what? Wise. And the other ones were foolish. Because of the matter and the way he exercised, the way he conducted what were imparted into him. What are you thinking? What are you building on? We see the comparison and the contracts of the personality here. One thinking about what ahead and I think about what I can get now. Praise the Lord. What I'm thinking about the storms that will come and because of that what happened, he put time into what he was doing. Praise the Lord. When the Bible talks about house, it's not just, he's not just referring to physical house. He's talking about building our personal life. Because when your personal life is not built, the families cannot be built. When your personal life is not built, the church cannot be built. When your personal life is not built, the nation cannot be built. I'm not speaking to somebody here. Have you look at yourself, where did I go wrong? Where does the crack come from? Crack in the walls. Crack in our lives. Where does it come from? Take this. A fool in the Bible is the inability or refusal to apply spiritual truth into life decision. The Bible call you fool. That's what Jesus say here. If, you, if you, you have that inability and you refuse to apply spiritual truth to your life decision, you are considered what? A fool. The choices you made. That's what we're talking about here. Praise the Lord. Bailing of your personal life, number one. We don't have time. But Psalm chapter 139, verse 23 and 24. Take it down, faith. You must have faith in yourself. First, that's the only way you will have faith in who you're listening to. Faith. Your trust in God, your growth in relationship with Christ, and your obedience and application of the word of God in all creatures area is what we call building a solid foundation. Amen. Because when it soon comes, when it soon so life comes your way, you will be grounded in the biblical truth. Amen? And you will remain started because why? You believe and your trust is built on the rock. I can't finish the message. Building your personal love. One what? Faith. It is wise to seek God's daily and ask him to seek your heart and make known what displeases him? Lord, what am I doing wrong? Why did I go right or wrong? I'm doing this, the same old thing, and it's not working. What is am I doing wrong? Now, how they build a look? Before somebody builds, they can see the blueprint of what is to be built. No builders will go to where they are building, they're taking stuff. No. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two, personal life, your finances. Matthew, Mark chapter 6, I mean, Edward Tennyson. In building on the right foundation, being a good steward over your own finances is a spiritual discipline that we all need. We all. Some of us live from paycheck to paycheck. Amen? Am I speaking to somebody here? Levy outside of your means. Bailing on the right foundation. Some of you got credit cards that choke your neck. Some of you, if you are not in debt, you're not happy. 
Building on the right foundation. Amen. You see somebody with something, you say, I want that same thing. What is it for or not? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Amen. It's a right to do it. It's a right to after it. But why? Because I know from this day, I'm not looking at here. I'm looking at what comes tomorrow. But what I'm, I'm talking about this here, the Bible tells us as the hearers and the doers of the word of God, we must engage into spiritual investment and what I call, what I call God prosperity plan for your life. Turn to somebody and say, engage in the what? Spiritual investment. And what? God's prosperity plan for my life. Praise the Lord. What you have, say God, you give it. This is what I want. I know that since you gave it, if I present it to you, like what we did today. Your talent. The way you use the resources. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about spiritual investment. The things of God are matters, beloved. Anything you put into God will never go in vain. And let's talk about God's prosperity plan. He said, now, let's see. He said, he said trust me. He said, try me. I bear, I, I, it's like God said, I dare you. Try me. You're tired. He said, just 10%. I'll give it to you. Why is it so hard for you to give it back to me? He said, I, I own it and I, I, I trust you with it. And I just ask for a little. That's what I call God's prosperity plan. Amen. Amen. Number three, honor Building your, your personal life. Spiritual and physical, and physical fitness. They better knew the kind of materials. They want to? No, better would just go and say, well, I want to build this house. And you go back. You want to build a brick house, you can't go buy a plank. Amen. You want to build a mansion, you can't go buy a zinc shop. Am I speaking to somebody here? So, People do not plan to waste their life, but they build on the wrong foundation. Nobody will say, well, I just want to be a man. I will suffer. I just want to live my level of no. But the decision you make sometimes causes you to get in that position. We all. Some of us make quick fits. We are not patient enough. On the solid rock. Amen. So, as a builder, you have to have dreams that affect your characters. Have what? Dream that affect your character and your career. You can't say, I'm dreaming to be a millionaire. Praise the Lord. I'm dreaming to be a pilot and you die in the kingdom. Building every aspiration that go along to what they will build on that other career and bear all that desire, you will pursue it. Praise the Lord. As a builder, you should have dreams that affect your desire and dreams that fit your destiny. Why some of us are struggling with many things because we are in the wrong area. And that means you are on the wrong foundation. Amen. Dreamer are like babies. Dreams are like babies. I mean, dreamers are like baby, baby caretaker. Get this. It's free. Dreamers are like babysitter. Because dreams are like babies. Amen? Dreams need to be felt. Dreams need to be nurtured. Dreams need to be protected. Amen? Dreams need to be secure.
So uh, as a builder, you must have a dream that affects your desire and fit your what? Your destiny. As a dreamer, spiritual and physical fitness is necessary. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Go home and read it. Our body is what the temples of God. The spirit of God resides within our body. We're also building on the right foundation. The church is the building, the church is also. A foundation upon which we can stand. So when somebody talking about building, they referring to the family. We talk about the Bible. The Bible talk about the house of David. Amen. He talk about the house of Saul, the house of Jacob. Those are building. So when you're talking about building a house, you are talking about your personal life. You are talking about the family life. You're talking about the, 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 the house of God. Amen. So your spiritual and physical fitness must fit within. Your dreams to build. Really quick here. A spiritual discipline that is part of your life. That God calls you for. When you strive to live a a healthy lifestyle. Also permit to carry it out. Permit yourself to carry it out. For the greater plans that God has over your life. There's future that's ahead of us. But some of us are talking about spiritual, physical, and spiritual fitness. Amen. If the spirit man is not breathed into what you're doing, beloved, it will not motivate your spiritual, your, your physical man to be able to push forward. It kind of come from within. So if it doesn't fit what you're thinking about, you cannot apply it in the physical. Because it got to come from the realms of the spirit to be manifested in the physical. Praise the Lord. That is why your spiritual life should stand on a solid foundation. There are some people who have been blessed. There was a person I heard about that won a large team of $7 million. And that man ended up being a watchman in New York. I must feel to somebody. Seven million dollars. In less than one year, he had a job as a watchman for security. You can think about that. Am I speaking to somebody here? Some of us say, since I've been working, I work, 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 I can see nothing. Are you on a sandy foundation or a solid foundation? Why? The money there. And money, if you're taking it out and you're not putting it back, here we go. He was taking trips, going around the world and doing this one, and he didn't even know what happened. Amen. In few months, he was broke. The hearer and the doer. Personal. We're closing here quickly. Number two, the family and God's godly friendship. If you build in your life. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 and 34. The family in the Bible is referred to the house of God. The house of David like I told you. But the relationship of the family is more important than anything. Some of you need your brother. You need your relative to be able to prop you up. I'm not talking about some relatives that are there to bring you down. Amen. But if your personal life should be better, beloved, I'm talking about your relationship with them. It's important to God because when God calls people, he calls them by the family. How 
can you bear when you're in a wrong friendship? How can you bear when you're in a wrong relationship? How can you bear when you're in a wrong family? Amen. Some family are meant to tear you down. But I say, what's better when your decision is firm and it is made with the choice that I know who I am. I know I have a desire. I know I have a dream. I know I have a destiny to fulfill. I will not do what? Allow anything to distract me. Amen. The family and your friendship. What the scripture says, knowing the bad company, the bad, the what the Bible says, bad company corrupt what? Be careful who you spend your time with. Be careful who you talk to concerning your get. Be careful who you concern you talk to concern your goal. Be careful who you talk to concern your dream. There are some of them who already die and they don't want to see anybody up. So when you tell them this is what God is giving me, I'm burning this up. They will tell you, say, it can't work. Praise the Lord. Be careful. Building the church. We don't have time for that. We may dwell with this next week. But I want to wrap up quickly here. The foundation. The first kinds of foundation Jesus demonstrated were Matthew 7, 24. He said, therefore, anyone who hear my word, the word of my important into practice, is like the wise man who was built. He has on the right. He's talking about the true understanding and the right action, the true convention and the commitment that manifests righteousness in the thought that God has already planned for you. Am I convinced what, what the Lord told me that I'm able to do? Praise the Lord. Oh God, we can do that. Honor in obedience and dedication of personal relationship with Christ can find the spiritual stability. If we are obedient to the word of God, praise the Lord, there's nothing. I want my life to be better to this. The first thing you do, tap into the rock. Amen. Jesus is the rock. Amen. Tap into what he wants you to do. God, you know, I have the desire. This is my dream. My destiny has got to be fulfilled because I know you're speaking to my soul. You're speaking within me. You're telling me something. Praise the Lord. Now listen, God did not make a junker. God did not make a trash. Amen. God created you. The Bible says in his image and likeness. God make you a special. He dedicated you. He set the mind in all of that you will be able to be that who be like God. Praise the Lord. If I'm not be like God, I got to think like God. I got to act like God. I got to behave like God. Because what? He knows no defeat. He never failed. He never lose a battle. He's not a loser. He never shake in any direction. So I got to think like him. Failure is not my portion. Building on the right foundation, amen. That means no other foundation anyone can lay than what Peter said than the one that has been established on a strong foundation, which is Christ. Your dream, say, Lord, this is it. Praise the Lord. We take this quickly. The same foundation. The foolish man built his house completely different. Instead of digging deep, he decided to build on a faster, cheaper goal. I don't want to suffer. So it's quick fix. Everybody want new thing. Everyone want an easy way. Amen. No rocket foundation. The bailer 
will have in any area to say it's easy. Amen. Because what? Barely on the rock. That means you got to hit high. Praise the Lord. That means you got to struggle. That means it takes time. That means you got to put time into it. Amen. If you barely on the rock, it doesn't come easy. Amen. You will see pain. You will have days. You will sweat. You will struggle. Because what? You are barely on the rock. So if you bury your life on the rock, this is my desire. This is my dream. Praise the Lord. To get to your dream, you must be, be hit back. To get to your dream, you must be insulted. To get to your dream, they must hate you. To get to your dream, they must curse at you. To get to your dream, they must prosecute you. Praise the Lord. I want to build, but I don't want to suffer. I want to build. I don't want to have work. I want to build, but I want to come easy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God say, on a solid foundation, it called for hard work. It called for tears. It called for, for, for struggle. It called for pain. It called for what? Dedication and commitment. Have you been to somewhere called Rush Crusher? Oh my God. Let me put this in a quick and give it to you free. We're not just talking about any rock. I'm talking about the rock we call the annual rock. The rock of age. Hallelujah. There are three different kinds of rock. I wonder if I can squeeze it in quickly. One, we got a rock called sedimentary rock. Hey. I told you this thing before. Tell somebody say, I'm not sedimentary. A sedimentary rock is a rock that is formed by particle of sand. Huh. Where it's raining, a little rock, the sand, the particle, the sand will put that rock, I mean, those sand, and the, the rain from the erosion. It glue that's little things together and become a rock. Amen. But a sedimentary rock is a rock. But it's a kind of rock that when you pick up, you can squeeze it with your hand. Are you the rock? Are you that rock? That anybody can yet twist your dream, twist your vision, turn your thinking around, make your decision to know the world. Are you the rock? And we got another rock called the metamorphic rock. The metamorphic rock is formed by their material. Amen? And those materials are materials that are there. They click together. Amen? The other person fail. They come to you with this. Huh? And the other person come this one. And they put the ideas together. Those are the rock. Their material that are filled by course and things. It comes together. It's a rock. But those are the rock. When something hit it, it's a chakra. Do it like that way. It's scatter. Praise the Lord. I'm asking you somebody here. Are you the person when your dreams is on fulfillment? When your dreams is in that direction, to somebody hit you. You say, that thing I was thinking about, I leave it all. Why? Because John Brown failed. He tried it. Damn material. And it didn't work. So you're taking the idea. Oh my God. Tell somebody say the devil is a liar. It shall never be my portion. I declare victory over your life. No discouragement. No forms of trouble will trouble your house and your mind. Your dream shall be fulfilled. You shall reach your destiny. No metamorphic contents of rock will break you apart. Am I speaking to somebody here? Some of you are where you are because what? Somebody told you I try it and it worked. So what make you think you can try? Tell the person the devil is a liar. I am building my life uh, on the right foundation. Not on the foundation of what person think, uh, what the person said, uh, not what they think about. Praise the Lord. Tell that person I'm not a metamorphic. But this is a rock that I'm talking about. A rock or in your rock. Praise the Lord. The in your rock is a word. That when you hit on it, you get fire back. Hallelujah. 
when you hit on it, it hold up on your pop. When you roll, when it rolls on you, you scatter. Hallelujah. But mistake when you knock against it, you feel the pain. That's the rock I'm talking about. Somebody shout, I am the rock, the rock of age. I'm unmovable. I'm uncrushable. I'm unscatable because I know. Barely. On the rock that never fail. Three comes. The foundation on the rock. Today, we close here. Building on the solid foundation. Any actor, you know, we know that a solid foundation is essential to building anything. A breakthrough is not built on a foundation that is solid. We will always have cracks in the world. Why? He that hearer, the doer, It doesn't matter how many messages we preach here, how many messages you listen to, how many seminars you go to. If you are not hearing to apply, we will always have what? On the wall. And I actually tell you what? No. The any building you build, it should be solid. What are in your relationship? Don't start cheap. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The way you start your relationship are high with Anna. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. In your personal life, don't take it for a joke. Amen. Yeah. Because the way you start your life, the high with Anna. Yeah. In your family life, don't take it for a joke. Because the way you start, the high with Anna. Yeah. You are the architects of your own life. You are the architects of your family. You are the architects of this building. Amen. Amen. So what am I saying here? The deeper you dig, will determine the height of the building. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, now listen. The deeper you go, it will determine why. <laughs> Hallelujah. I must speak to somebody here the last time pastor preached that. Go out deep. Dig wide, let it wide, deeper. So I'm telling you now, the deeper you dig, it will determine what? The height. I'll give an illustration here. For some of us, we live in major big cities. We are familiar with major big cities. If you go downtown of that particular city that you know, you see skyscraper. Amen. Some are taller than the other. The structures are beautiful and some are built. And when you reach, you look up, you admire. How did the people get to where to make the building look so beautiful? You admiring the builder's application. And you begin to wonder. Praise the Lord. Some of the belly is taller. But this is an example. We live in Charlotte. In the state of North Carolina. And according to Wikipedia dictionary, Charlotte is the largest city in the United States. Look it up. The city of Charlotte is the largest city. In the United States. And it is a site of 60 completed high rise buildings. The city of Charlotte, 60 high rise buildings. That's what Wikipedia is saying to me. Some 200 feet, and eight of these buildings, is, they are above 5,500 feet. But the tallest building of all of the buildings in Charlotte. It's the Bank of America, the Bank of America Corporate Center. 
You want to know how high that building is? It's 871 feet high. The world, when you stay in the world, you see it. Amen. But let's see, it was built in 1992, completed. And it stands as well, the tallest building in the whole of North Carolina. You see? Getting ready to erect that building for it to be such a skyscraper. Like the Bank of America, what happened? They had to, first of all, I don't know whether you've been somewhere where they tried to build, they were quarantined the place. They would build something around that place, the building. They would quarantine that place. And when they quarantine that, what they're going to do? Then they start the foundation. Amen. So, the building you see up there, that means for them to know that I want to build such a building as high as above every other building, we have to do what? Go deep down, deeper, deeper, deeper. Because what? It's the foundations that will hold the height. Amen. I'm talking to you. If you want to be lifted, hallelujah, you got to do a Go deep down. Going down, man, you got to sacrifice. You got to spend time. You got to put energy into it. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. Why you go? Keep going down. Because what? You are looking at what? The heart of your life. Stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Am I speaking to somebody here? You cannot build a skyscraper on a chicken coop. On a quicksand. So I don't know where you're standing in your life right now. Lord, I have tried. I tried to build my life. I tried to build this up. And it's not working. It's working. Amen? Yeah. All you have to do is what? Deep. Deep Amen. Yeah. Because what? The deeper you go determines what? The heights of the building. Tell somebody say I'm digging deeper. We'll continue the service next Sunday. I mean this program next Sunday. I'm digging what? Deeper. Building on the right foundation. It will always give you the grace. I was praying and asking God why. For I bear in ministry for 40. 1982, I don't know how much, probably it is 40, 40 plus year. And pastoring, building church, training, and giving people. And I've experienced people like new things. People don't like to suffer. People like when the work is already done, then they join you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. But if your foundation is being built on people like that, you are on a sinking sand. Because why? When a storm comes, they run. Am I speaking to somebody here? So it, it put me to a place that where that four, four or five churches came here. We can't call names. But that church got flooded. After a certain time, Next one came. Everybody, the top, top people in shadow. <sighs> After a certain time. <sighs> when breakthrough came, the first time we launched out of the church, imagine this. Even though my, my, my ideas in the church, in the community was good, where we had that Friday night prayer, so I mean, we were well known. For, for us to say we launched in the church on Raking Road, the very first day we didn't get here, nothing. We left the building. One, over 150 people. Do I have a witness? They don't mind, but they're standing up. 
First day we launched a church. Just for them, we're getting out of the building. Hundred over hundred. People, I was surprised. I didn't preach that day. One of my pastors preached. I said, Lord, what is this? What are, you, what are you trying to show me? And what happened? We did everything, gave, laid out structures and this and that. And the very people, some of them, when they don't have their will, when they want to override, it don't happen to us. Praise the Lord. People love new things. People don't love to suffer. Let, let's say for example when somebody giving free food here. A breakthrough says everybody who want to, their rent to be paid, you want this and you can't kind of break through. But what are we doing? We're building on a fair foundation. Because what happened? We have rest disciples. John chapter 6, in John chapter 6, Jesus told them, say, he failed the 5,000 plus. And after sending that, they left me and said, oh, some of you just came to do what? To eat? But don't envy anybody. You are in a marathon in your life. Some people went to school together and they graduated together and some are ministers, some are bank corporate director, but you stay on a level. Amen? What you working on, work on it. And make take time because why? you're building on the right foundation. Praise the Lord. Are you with me this morning? Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We ask you to bless us in a special way under this message, oh God, that as your people, we sense the directions of calling of what you are about to do in our life. That we know, oh God, in a decision making concern in our life, there's something that you already know. Give us a little, more, a little bit more patience that we can work on ourselves. To be able to fit within our destiny. We thank you. We praise you. And we honor you. In Jesus name. And the people of God say. Amen. Somebody say thank you Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Now the question is. Which foundation are you building on? Go and think about it. Is there crack on your